What's up YouTube? In today's video we are going to talk about my all-time favorite EDC gear from 2020 that will carry over and form my main EDC gear for the start of 2021. So let's get into it. Despite a metric ton of bad stuff that happened last year, all over the world and in my personal life, overall for me personally, 2020 has been a fairly good year. I started this little channel of mine back in November 2019 and even though I have by far not been able to put out as much content as I would have liked to, I still got the opportunity to try to test some awesome gear and chat with you guys in the comments below. Anyway, with this video I want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed. It's such a cliche to say, but with all the work that goes into making these videos, it's really nice to see that people appreciate the time and effort put in, especially for small channels like my own which are usually run by people like me as a side project while working full time. But anyway, as I said, I had a great year in terms of EDC gear in 2020. And with this video, I want to show you all of my favorite items that I have carried over into 2021. If you only care about any specific category, feel free to use the timestamps in the description below. Without any further ado, let's start with the basics. I'll exclude two categories for this video though smartphones and watches, because I've been rocking the iPhone 10 as well as the SYN 104 for the better part of two years now, and see no reason to upgrade them just yet. Even though I like both the iPhone and the SYN 104 a lot, I cannot sit here and tell you that these are the greatest items of all time in their respective category. There are certainly better phones and watches out there, and also better YouTube channels to review those. But anyway, the first category here will therefore be my wallets. Everyone loves a good wallet and so do I and I am glad that there are more and more front pocket wallets released every day. Some of the wallets I got to try out last year were really innovative like this prototype I got sent over from DP Steel and Leather and other stuff was more mass market like this Bellroy card caddy. But still, each of them are great in their own way. My favorite wallet this year however by far is this glorious piece of leather which is called the Grain Wallet by Taurus Camp. I say piece of leather because this is apparently made from just one piece of leather that is being wrapped around itself and stitched together in only one place to make this highly functional buttonless design. This wallet was recommended to me by a viewer and I bought it almost instantly after I checked out their page. Sadly, I can't seem to find the original comment anymore. So whoever you were, thanks. This wallet is not the smallest wallet in the world but it's still easily small enough to be a front pocket wallet. In terms of its functionality, you get a main compartment for all of your cards. I usually carry 6 to 8, but could easily fit more if I wanted to. I am also able to clip a tiny pen in here. This guy is made by the company online, it costs only a couple of bucks and comes in handy all the time. Anyway, behind the main compartment I have a small slot that goes down about half the length of the wallet. In there I can store my cash coins. I tried going cashless last year, but truth be told, it doesn't really seem to work out for me. So I love the fact that I got a small coin pocket on this one. By the way, in case you were wondering, the lid is only being held in place by friction. But despite that, I have never had anything fall out of my wallet, despite using this for the better part of 2020. Behind the lid you can wedge in your folded paper bills. Top marks for that. But hold on, we are not done yet. The party trick of this wallet is that it has another small slot that you can access from the side and use to store a key. I love it. This means that I can be sure to always be able to get back into my home if I leave with the wallet in my pockets. I do have more than one key, but I don't need to carry all of those keys on my person at all times. Just FYI, I carry all of my other keys on this simple yet elegant key organizer made by Carl Friedrich. So to sum it up. This is a handcrafted leather wallet with a highly functional design, great looks and a very slim profile. There are many great wallets on the market, but out of all the ones that I've tried so far, this is my favorite. Next item on my list is my EDC flashlight of choice. The flashlight is one item that I use a lot and that I honestly cannot understand how I ever was able to get things done without one handy at all times. Why I hear you ask? Well, great question. Sit your sorry bottom down and make yourself a cup of coffee. It's story time. Once upon a time, before the second wave hit Germany hard, the missus and I took a cable car to get to a restaurant on top of a small mountain. We had a great time, thanks for asking, 
Good views, great food, decent wine. It was so nice, in fact, that it would have been a waste of an evening to just end it then and there. So instead of taking the cable car back down again, we decided to go for a wander and hike down the mountain to where we had parked our car. Now, that is the type of spontaneous adventure that you simply cannot go on without a bright and reliable flashlight at hand. There are, of course, also other use cases, for example, using it to take a quick look under your car after hearing a strange sound, making yourself visible while going for a walk in the dark, lighting the way in an underground car park when the lights don't work, and as a quick on-the-go light for photography. So what I want out of my EDC flashlight is maximum brightness, reliability and runtime in a form factor that is as small as possible. Plus it needs to look good, you know, for Instagram. Don't judge. The one that has worked best for me is still the good old Olight S1 Arbiton 2. I got a special titanium edition, but the regular version would also work just as well, except for Instagram. But anyway, this little guy pumps out a ton of light for its size, roughly 900 lumens to be specific. It's powered by a 16340 lithium ion battery that can be recharged via a magnetic USB charging cable and it fits in the coin pocket of my chino pants. It's certainly not the smallest EDC light out there and neither is it the brightest, but it's the one that just worked best for what I needed it to do. I have been using this for hours on end, dropped it dozens of times and it's still going strong. Not much else to say about it, you can use the magnet to stick it onto magnetic surfaces, which comes in handy every now and then, and that's about it. So the second to last category is the good old pocket knife. I've expanded my collection to a reasonable size over the years, featuring anything from your old school GEC slip joint over more modern traditionals like the JE Made Lenny's Clip, higher end tools slash beta knives like the Sebenza, and fast and light knives like the Benchmade Bugout. As regular viewers and Instagram followers will know, I tend to rotate my knives on an almost daily basis, depending on what other gear I carry and, of course, what my needs are on any given day. There are, however, a few knives that simply get more pocket time than all the others, and there is one knife in particular that stood out last year, and that knife is the Chris Reef Nandi. The Chris Reef Nandi is what I would call a modern gentleman's folder. Nandi means beautiful in Zulu, which makes perfect sense because it is indeed a beautiful knife, and also because Chris Reef, the founder of Chris Reef Knives, started out in South Africa before he moved to Idaho. The Nandi, while beautiful, is by no means a hard use knife. Compared to other modern gentleman folders, it does however offer some features that make it slightly more practical and safe to use. First of all, it offers a locking mechanism, so the knife will not fold into your hands as easily if handled in a wrong manner. Also, it offers a pocket clip, so it's easier to carry and faster to get to. One thing that I particularly enjoy is the fact that this knife is available as a right and a left hand variant. So I, as a left handed person, can carry this on the side that feels most natural to me. Also, going back to the aesthetics, I truly appreciate the spotted beach wooden inlays and the contrast you get against the brushed titanium. The fine blue line that forms the CRK logo on your pivot screw is another nice touch and also perfectly complements the blue accents on my Olight S1R, which again leads to bonus points for the Instagram factor. This is not meant to be a review, but I can show you this knife without mentioning a little defect I got on mine. As you can see, the wooden inlay seems to slowly detach itself from the handle, and I have seriously not used this for any kind of hard task. So seeing this after just about one year of carry leaves me slightly worried, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it I guess. Until then, it's a very good looking, highly functional, lightweight two-handed knife. I hope the small defect won't get any worse, or that, if it does, CRK will make it right for me. Other than that, I also do hope that they will start making a left-handed impinder, preferably also with inlays, at some point in the near future, since that would be one knife I'd buy in a heartbeat. But anyway, for now, this is, at least for my use cases, the best overall EDC knife of all times. Your mileage may vary though, depending on what your needs are for a pocket knife and what you are legally allowed to carry wherever you live. The last category on this list is a secondary tool. This category is kind of optional most of the time, but since I try to keep it plateless in this category, it becomes my main tool if I travel anywhere via plane or if I go places where I can't bring a knife for other reasons. The tool I chose for this category is the Leatherman Style PS. This was a close one between this and the Victorinox Jet Setter, but I simply use the Leatherman way more often in my day-to-day -day life. It comes in handy while traveling all the time, I never had any issues with TSA and it really complements whatever main knife I carry on me on any given day. The Style PS features a small pair of spring-loaded pliers with tiny wire cutters, a pair of scissors, 
a nail file, a pair of tweezers and a carabiner that can be used as a bottle opener as well. No EDC system can ever be complete without a bottle opener. If you want to know more about the Leatherman Style PS, I've got a whole video dedicated to that tool. So these were my picks for best EDC gear of all times from 2020 carrying over to 2021. Let me know what you think about my list and most importantly what would be on your own list. Also if there's anything that you think might fit into my EDC gear system and that you would like me to check out let me know in the comments below. But anyway I hope you have a good one. Until next time thanks for watching take care.